This conference will... Amen. Praise God. This is Reverend Essie. Welcome to Micromana. And we are on already the 1st of June, 2011. God is good. Amen. Is everybody with me? I'm here. Okay. And remember star six to go off and star seven if you want to say anything. Um, I'm glad to see everybody here tonight. God's been good to us. I know he's been good to me, and I'm just one of his very many children. <laughs> he's, he's a good father. Amen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pray um, the Bible study in. Uh, before I do that, um, how many people would like to read with us tonight? Just say, I do. Say your name. Yeah, this is Rod. I, I will. I'll, I'll help read. That's Lexi's one. Um, Lexi's two. I'm three. Anybody else? Okay. Well, if you change your mind, feel free to change your mind. If the Lord lays something on your heart, feel free to tell us. Okay. So, um, I'll go ahead and pray. And Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for this Bible study tonight. I thank you for allowing us to see another June. You're a good God. Thank you for getting us through all the things that you got us through. Lord, you're keeping us alive. You're, you're giving us good health. We thank you for the healings that we've been hearing about in people, and we know that's nobody but you because the enemy does not want us to be healed. He doesn't want us to be rich and free. He doesn't want us to be rich in Christ Jesus, but you gave us Jesus on a cross, Lord, and he shed his blood for us. And, Lord Jesus, nobody else can do anything like that for us but you. We thank you for what you've done. We ask right now that you enter this Bible study and let us hear from you. We hear from one another enough. We want to hear from your Holy Spirit, Lord God. We want your Holy Spirit to teach us. And, Lord God, whatever we learn in here, let it be seed plant, seeds planted in the, the bottom of our hearts so we can grow and we can go out and teach other people what we've learned here tonight. Lord God, I ask that you bless the sick and the shut-in, and I always ask you to bless the incarcerated, those that are incarcerated, whether it's physical, mental, or emotional, Lord God. I ask you to bless those people and those that are coming on. Bless them, those that can't make it, Lord God. I ask that you uh, give them a special touch as well. And, Lord, just for the people who are suffering from this bad weather that's going around, we're praying for every country, every state, every nation that is experiencing this bad weather. Nobody can hide from this. And it's going to get to the point, Lord God, we thank you for taking care of us, Lord God, when it gets to the point where no one will have anywhere to run and nowhere to hide. But we want to hide in Jesus because you're just that good, Lord God. We thank you tonight in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. God is good. I just, I just love him so much. And, and even when, it, when you're down, he, he just finds ways to bring us up. He doesn't like to see us down or depressed or out. And, you know, we're rich in Christ Jesus, and we need to exercise that every day of our lives. Amen. So does anybody have a song or a poem or anything they'd like to say? I'm missing Judy right now, the poetry lady. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is it Lex, anybody? Uh, no. No. Okay. Um, I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to praise him with my hands. I'm going to praise him with my feet. I'm going to praise him with my heart. I'm going to praise him with my mouth. Then I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You know, sometimes whenever we sing on here, it bubbles, you know, the, our telephones or whatever, I guess the cell phones or whatever bubble, but I'm just going to bubble right on to heaven, right on to God's ears and back. Amen. <laughs> And my bubble when we try to listen to it, but God smiles when he hears it. Amen. 
All right, so we're going to do tonight um, Matthew chapter 6. And um, we're not really, we don't really always have to take up the hour unless it takes up the hour. The Holy Spirit of God takes us through the hour. If he does that, then that's okay with me. Um, but uh, I'll do 1, 2, and 3. And Lex, you can do 4, 5, and 6. And Pastor Rod, you can do 7, 8, and 9. And then we'll go back. I'll do 10. Let me mark myself because I'm always forgetting and asking. I'll start with 10. All right. Um, tonight we're going to be reading part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And it's talking about benevolence. Taking heed. We'll be talking about alms. And our Father, our Heavenly Father, talking about heavenly citizenship. Uh, we'll also be talking about pride, Pharisees, and honor. God's knowledge is a searcher of our hearts. And then we're going to get into instructions concerning prayer by our big brother Jesus, by our Savior, Yeshua, God's Son. Amen. And I'll read 1, 2, and 3, and it says... Take heed that you do not do your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. <laughs> but when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Amen. And what this is telling us is um, what I see. God, Jesus is telling us it's in red. It's his, it's his words. They wrote it and, and put it in red, letting us know that this is from um, the Savior's mouth. He's saying, take, when he says take heed, he's saying pay attention. Make sure that. You know, these are just two words for the way we talk. Make sure that you do not do your alms before men to be seen of them. All he's saying is, if you're going to give, give from your heart. Give out of love. Don't give because someone's watching you and you want someone to um, worship you um, because you gave, you, because you want to hear someone uh, lift you high because you gave. In doing it for the Lord. You're doing it because God is, you, when you give, you're supposed to give because God is using you to bless somebody else. Amen. Not, not, to, not to bless yourself, but God will bless you for that, but um, not to be seen. He goes, otherwise you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. What the, he's telling you right there that if you give for any other reason, if you're giving to be seen, you will not receive a reward. God is not going to reward you because you are giving for your own consequences and not for, for the kingdom of heaven. In verse 2, he says, Therefore, when you do your alms, don't sound a trumpet, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues, and in the streets that they may, glory, be, uh, have, that they may have glory of men. Ver, uh, verily I say unto you that they'll have the reward. In other words, these people, the hypocrites, always want to be seen. They want people to see how much they're writing on their check. They want people to see, I don't know if you ever noticed, but you could ever go to some churches and you see people walking down the aisle or opening up their purses or their wallets and they, and they hold the $50 bill up so everybody can see it. And, you know, have you ever seen anybody do that? You could kind of tell it's a little corny. They're doing it just so that you can see how much they're giving. Actually, I don't know if you remember, but years ago, do you remember how old people used to give money? They would crunch up the money. And put it in your hand, and you would crunch your hand so nobody can see it. And they secretly gave. That was called. Now, we're in, we're in an age and time now where people don't do things secretly too much anymore. And you don't see too many people doing that anymore. Nowadays, they give, and they want to tell how much they gave, and they want to claim it on their taxes, and they want it in the newspaper. So that's not doing it because they love you. That's doing it because they want people to see what they did. And in verse 3, when you they say, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And what that means to me is give instantaneously. If you're sitting in a church or if you're sitting in a, in a restaurant 
and you see a poor family or a poor woman or a poor man sitting there or whatever, and you want to give, if you're sitting in a church, for instance, and, 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 it, and God lays it on your heart, you have a $100 bill in your purse, and God says, give the 100 And you're sitting there thinking to yourself, well, wait, this was supposed to be for my electric. I need at least 50 for the electric, Lord. You know, you don't ever question the Lord. When God tells you, we have to trust. God. We have to allow God to surprise us with his blessings and his love. That's what we said in Bible study last Wednesday, that we should allow God to surprise us. Remember the cake we were talking about, Lexi? Uh Amen. So when God tells you to give, don't sit there and and, and wonder, well, should I or shouldn't I? Just jump up and give the $100. And God Uh is so good, I guarantee you, that if you do it like that, if you, you hurry up and just give it before you can change your mind, that you will get blessed 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. And I don't know if anybody realizes this, but I did a little study and heard a few of uh, my uh, higher ups say that 100 fold is a lot. I don't know if you know, but yeah, 100 fold is not 100. When you're, when, you're, when, you're asking, when you're asking God to bless somebody 100 fold, that's thousands and thousands and thousands of blessings. It's not a hundred blessings. Sixty fold is not sixty blessings. And thirty fold is not thirty blessings. And I'm done. Amen. Amen. Okay, so next you want to do four, five, and six? Uh, okay. Well, no, Lexi. Lexi's gonna do it. Lexi's gonna do it. Do you hear me? Uh-huh. Yeah, yes. Okay. So that your giving may be in secret, then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Um... Or is basically like do you're giving secret, like you said, old people crunching up that money like that. Um, five, like I know five, I I see that a lot in churches, especially as like a Christian that's like baby Christians. Like we go to a church and like somebody's praying long, and like you can tell when they're just overdoing it, like long, it's a show. Long winded prayers, prayers. Yeah, like long, you're long winded prayers. Long winded. Did they you hear? Start, yeah, they just heard, um, they just put all the, like, folks they heard in their life into every prayer they say, and, like, there's no there's no meaning in it. And I heard something the other day that was, like, if you, nobody just wants you to talk over them, like, they want you to actually connect to God and pray for them. So if you're actually praying, you should kind of have something new to say, something emotional, and it's short and simple, I guess. And, um, That's true. Mm-hmm. Number six, I think God's basically telling us, you should have your own relationship with God. Like, he appreciates koinonia, just like a, a husband and a wife have private time. They go into the bedroom and they have private time. So God kind of wants that private time, like that that closeness, I guess. I don't know a good word to put it, but... Mm. Amen. Seclusion. Seclusion, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Jesus. Secret prayer. Amen. Uh, you know what, Can I, I'm going to add on to what you said. Uh, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell everybody if you want to, well, the ones that come here, I don't know, Deborah, if you know this, but if you want to add, be glad to add. You know, be, take yourself, take your time and add, because we, we add little tidbits at the end or whatever. But I want to add on to something Alexi said about the prayer. You know, um, there was actually a time, uh, and some of you may call me a nut for saying this, but I have to say it, and it's the truth, and somebody might learn from it. But for years... For years, I was uh, intimidated by the way some people pray in church. It, mm-hmm. I don't know if you want to say it became a stumbling block to me or what, but I had the hardest time and had pastored my own church. This is the truth. And, and, and I've, I've seen people in church and they're like, and Heavenly Father, <laughs> I want to say, you know, <laughs> and they're doing this, and they're praying. I'm not to mock people, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. There's people that just pray and pray and pray. Have you ever had somebody pray so long that your body begins to hurt and you can't wait to sit down? No, yeah, that's right. ridiculous. Long yeah, you know prayers. what I'm saying? Long-winded prayers. Exactly. Where the prayers become a sermon in, in themselves. That's right. what it is. They're, they get, you said it. That's what they're doing it for themselves, and they're doing it to show off. 
And what happened to me was I should have never allowed this to happen, but I caused it to intimidate me. I became intimidated by it. And it got to the point that whenever I, I, I went to a church once where there was a few of us ministers there, and whenever they called on me to pray, I had the hardest time pressing in. I'm, I'm ashamed to say it, but, you know, what you could do is, what's that, what's that called? You you uh, you can cause somebody to stumble. And I, I literally, I, what happened to me was I was putting myself as a low man on a totem pole. I hate to use that expression, but I, I felt really bad and because I felt like I wasn't, that, that God was upset with me because I couldn't pray like they could. You yeah, see? Mm-hmm. Well, fortunately, God, God is not innocent in our elephants. Mm-hmm. What was you going to say, Lex? I think a lot of the church people that have them along with their prayers are into theatrics, and they're into the entertainment of the fact and not the actual fact that you're supposed to be connecting with God when you pray. And, like, mm-hmm. that, that a lot of people, like, baby Christians, like, if God likes children more than anything in the world, then clearly he likes things simple. <laughs> like, That's you know, the I mean, word. It's, it's, Who is it? Isn't that the Apostle Paul that said that God's word is simple? Was that Jesus mm-hmm. who said that? Or Apostle Paul said God's word is simple. He's basic. He doesn't want that. That, that like you said, theatrics, and you have to be. Thea- you know, some people when they go to Bible school, they're actually taught how to do those things. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but Pastor Rod. Have you ever heard it? They actually teach you how to. What's it called? Cre- crescendo. They teach you how to. That you start out slow, and then in the middle of it, you talk a little louder. And then I've begin. heard. That, I've, I've, it, I've heard that theatrics a long time. Yeah, what is it? I can't think of the name of it, what it's called, but I don't do that. <laughs> I'm sorry, that, that's theatrics to me. I do what the Holy Spirit did. You know, Joyce Meyer moves millions of people talking in this tone that I'm talking and doesn't scream once. Right. Praise Jesus. Amen. It's, it's a matter of the heart. That's right. I was thinking, mm-hmm. you know, they say they say Jesus wasn't attractive. So mm-hmm. obviously, like, they, he wasn't. He wasn't easy to catch to the eye, and these people in these churches are just trying to please the senses. Mm-hmm. And they're missing the whole point of things. Mm-hmm. You know that they were attracted to the anointing of Jesus, and that's what they. Ooh, ooh, Lexi, that'll preach. Lexi, my daughter's mm-hmm. preaching on here today, y'all. And that's you know that's what they should be attracted to the anointing, not your looks or how long you pray. Amen. All right. All right, Pastor Rod, you want to do? Seven. Am I doing it right? Am I yeah, there, God? Sure. Okay. <laughs> and in praying, do not heap up empty phrases as, as a Gentile. So, talk about theatrics, empty phrases. Mm-hmm. Where they think think that they will be heard for their for their main words. I've heard that. I've heard. It, I've heard it. I've, I've sadly put that. I've sadly listened to that experience. They'll bring a pious tone to their voices. Mm-hmm. Do not be like them. Do not, do not be like them. Your Father in Heaven knows what you what you need even before you ask Him. Right. That's right. You could do eight and nine too. I'm sorry. Oh, I forgot. This out. She's my eyes. So I have a hard time reading. reading. No, we do. Me and my daughter too. Uh, do not be like them, for your father knows what, what you need before you ask him. Pray then, <laughs> then pray then, then like us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, be thy name. Really, this is, the Lord's Prayer is a summary of all the scriptures. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about the Lord's Prayer? Well, it's horribly misused. Obviously. How do you feel about verse 9 itself? Jesus says, after this manner, therefore pray ye. How do you feel about that? Verse what? Verse 9, the one you just read. After yep. this manner, therefore pray ye. Our Father, who art in heaven, how be thy... Do you see I what said, he's saying? Yeah, I'm sorry. I put... I put uh, set the priorities first. It's a diagram on how to pray. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's what I was getting at. She felt it. That's it. Mm-hmm. He didn't say, 
Well, we turned it into a, a, a prayer that we print out and put in, in a picture frame. But they, even though it is beautiful and it helps us, but in other words, he's telling us after this, in other words, pray like this. He didn't say pray these exact words. He said pray l- like this. Jesus, Jesus didn't come to give the law. Say it again. Jesus didn't come to give the law. Mm-hmm. Now, um, on verse, I do 10, 11, and 12, so I'm just going to do 10, 11, and 12. It says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And sometimes we say our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Now, what I want to add is from what I just read, the three that I just read in verse 9 that Pastor uh, uh, Rod just read, if you look at how Jesus is saying this prayer, he's telling us first, verse 9, address the Father. You address him. This is what, if people, remember, remember Jesus told us, I think we studied last week or the week before, Jesus always had like um, uh, sayings that he, he uh, in wisdom for his disciples and apostles that other people just wouldn't understand because they didn't have the spirit within them to understand what it meant. And see, he's mm-hmm. speaking to them again. He's saying it again. And, he, and with the spirit, with the wisdom of God, he's teaching people. He's saying, first you address the Father Heavenly Father, my Father, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the I Am, hallelujah, the creator of all things. You know I love you, Lord. I love you, and I thank you for the things you've done for me. This is my request, my prayer to you today. Be addressing first. Then you say what's going to happen. You prophesy. It isn't, you know, prophecy is not about getting a new Cadillac and a swimming pool. Prophecy is, is prophesying about the kingdom of heaven, about Jesus. And he goes, thy kingdom come, and your will is going to be done in earth, amen, as it is in heaven. He says, your will is going to be done in earth as it is in heaven. God tells us whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. There's power in those two scriptures. Then he goes, uh, 10, 11, am I reading? Oh, then, uh, that kingdom. then 11, give us this day our daily bread. In other words, ask God for what you need day by day, and you don't have to worry about tomorrow. Doesn't he say don't worry about tomorrow? Mm-hmm. The birds don't have to worry about eating. No, I, so I had 10, 11, and 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, I know the King, King, King James from England wrote this, but he, uh, he, did the, he, wrote, he wrote the Bible according to what the old scriptures had written down in the Greek and the Hebrew. And he came up with this, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That means that you will not be forgiven of anything that you owe until you begin to forgive people that owe you. And Jesus even told a story about that. He, t- he told a parable about the man that got upset. He was forgiven for what he owed, but he wouldn't forgive the man that was underneath him for what he owed. And he, they didn't treat him too nice about that. And I'm done. Cool. Anybody wants to add? Anybody have any questions or anything they want to say? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lex, you want to do the next three? Yeah, it's 13, right? Mm-hmm, 13, 14, and 15. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men of their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Uh, Hello? Do, wait, how did you read that? Did you read 13, 14, and 15? Yes. Yeah. Read it again. Okay. Um, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against Uh, you... Wait, okay, what Bible are you using? NIV. Really? Because it left out, it says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Wow, that's not in my Wow, did it leave all that out? That's crazy. Yeah. Wow, isn't it? See, you see how God is? He taught us something here tonight. What Bible are you using so we know not to buy it? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's 
the Adventure Bible by Zondervan, New International Version. Is that that version. purple one? Yeah. Oh, and so that's a whoever, little kid's Bible. Yeah, whoever Zondervan is left that part out. <laughs> oh, my, y'all remember that? See, see, the Lord is good. He shows us something tonight. That's, is that the purple you know Bible, and it's made for kids, right? Yeah, you know, if we're in chapter 15, like, I think there's an error. Because it says that if you do not forgive men their sins, like that's what it says. And that doesn't sound grammatically correct. What? <laughs> Isn't that something? Look how they're misleading our children. You, did you hear that, Debbie? Yes. Oh, Pastor Rod, y'all hear that? Isn't that something? Unfortunately, okay, those things happen. Uh, yeah, okay, to say read 14 and 15, let us hear that one, babe. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Okay, that was all right. But, boy, they left out uh, 13B. (laughs) Uh, Okay. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, man. Well, it's it's all kind of self-explanatory, huh? Yeah. Would you say that God is saying right there in those three that what you do comes back to you? Yes. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, man. Pay it forward. You know, when you when you pay when you pay it forward like that, sooner or later, it's gonna come back around to you if it goes through thousands of people. Millions of people, it's still going to come back around to you. Amen? Mm-hmm. Well, he also says, when so a man sows, that also shall he reap. He sure does. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to get back. If you're evil with folks, people are going to be evil with you. You know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? If you're not, the Bible says if a man wants friends, he must first show himself to be friendly. You know? That's right. Amen. Mm-hmm. God said, if you act like me, folks will treat you like I'm in you. Right. But if you don't act like me, they're just going to know it's you. <laughs> Praise but how God. Did, Amen. How did he tell them that they would know that we were Christians? You know how them we, by their fruit. Right. And what fruit? Our love. Love, patience, joy. Yes. Mm. Amen. Y'all notice I'm getting quiet, right? I'm trying to get her to say more. <laughs> you're, you're doing fine. <laughs> go, go ahead. Go ahead. We're listening. No, like, that's you it. You know a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Um, 15, is, am, uh, am I up? Or, no, Pastor Ron's up, huh? What uh, verses? You're 16, 17, and 18. And when you fast, do not look dismal, like the hypocrites. For they disfigure their faces that they're fasting to be seen by men. Therefore, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you fast, oops, I can't read. Anoint your head and wash your face. Your fasting may be seen by not, if you see that your fasting may not be seen seen by men, your father, heavenly father sees it in secret, and your father who will, will, will see in secret your reward in him. Here again, don't show off. Hmm. Okay. What, what did you say? Don't show off. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Don't show off. Hmm. Anything else you want to say, Pastor Ross? Uh, just one thing. I'm going back to giving your alms. At my church, we have the most um, uh, insignificant way of giving alms. The pastor holds the old coffee can and draws a slot in it, in it. So you just drop your offering in there. In there. There's no show off or any pre- pretense at all. Mm. That's see. That's good. That's good. Amen. And 
you, you know what I noticed when you when you were reading seventeen? Um, I don't know if the rest of you has ever heard this, but I've heard preachers. Well, you know, everybody doesn't get everything right all the time, and we all make mistakes. But I don't care if you have a degree or not. Somewhere along the line. Somebody's going to make a mistake with the Word of God. That's why we're called children of God, because we ask our daddy, Father, I made a mistake. Could you please show me what you really, really meant by this? You know, I don't believe in putting people in hell because they said a, a sentence wrong or they said a wrong word. But you ever hear anybody say, don't anoint your head. You're not supposed to anoint yourself. It's oh. blasphemy. I mean, they say something where I forget what they, I've heard preachers preach on that. Do you see what it says in verse 17? Anoint thy head and wash thy face. In other words, clean yourself up anoint yourself, fill yourself with the anointing of God, and, and, and have your ever-loving joy that Jesus told you to have. Yes. So wh- wh- where did they get this do not anoint yourself stuff from? They must have got it from the Old I, Testament. I have no idea. Mm-hmm. I, I have no idea whatsoever. Hmm. Amen. That means that you would need more than Jesus. They're trying to say you need more than Jesus to get blessed. Well, I, I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not trying to put down ministers, so please don't think I am. But um, we're supposed to be taught so that we can survive on our own to a degree with Thank the you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. We're supposed Thank to be you, matured. And so many ministers don't want to teach us to be mature in Christ Jesus they want to they keep both. us instant. They, both, they want us to continue to drink milk instead of being able to to eat the meat of the word, and mm-hmm. and, and that's the reason they'll say you can't do this or you can't do the other, and you are to go to the minister for everything instead of knowing that the Lord is my shepherd. It doesn't say my minister is my shepherd. <laughs> The Lord Jesus is my shepherd. That's right. It's my shepherd. And and, and he, because some, oh, um, what what was the, there was a young prophet that went, and he was told not to stay in the city, not to spend the night there. And the older ones came to him and told him, yeah, you're supposed to spend the night. God, he didn't mean that you were going to surely die. And what happened to the young man? He surely died. Because he was disobedient to what God had told him to do. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. And think of the ministries that died because they did what man would have them to do instead right. of what God, so what told God them. wants them to do. Yes. I struggled with that for years. I was so busy. You know, when I was younger, the way I grew up and the things that happened to me, I was so busy trying to please people. I just wanted somebody to accept me, and I just wanted somebody to love me and understand me, and it's hard. When you're out there trying to gain the attention of people, that's just what you get, the attention of people, which is not always positive. You know, and it got to the point where I was too busy trying. I I had asked the Lord to forgive me. I was too busy trying to please man. Instead of waiting to listen to what God wanted me to do with the ministry, I turned it into Essie's ministry and did Essie's thing. And guess right. what? I almost lost, almost lost it all. Right. You know, because person A tells you, "No, do it this way," and person B says, "I don't like when you do that. That's not that's not God. You're a false prophet." You know, and then person C says, "No, you do it this way." And then you know, you if you listen, you can't know nobody. You cannot listen to all the voices. You cannot listen to all the voices. When I got anointed and I got sent out to do ministry, Pastor Janet and Pastor Ed told me, There's, you're going to hear voices. There's going to be voices. Don't pay attention to none of those voices. Listen to God. Listen to him. Right. Mm-hmm. Open Amen. up to hear him. That's right. That's right. And because that's why I... I'll go, okay, go ahead. It's getting good. Whoever wants to talk, go ahead. <laughs> because just because someone's a minister or a pastor don't mean they can tell you what God really has for you. Because Mm -hmm. his ministry may be totally different for you and may have you meeting a different group of people that he's trying to touch. And if you go maybe the traditional way, he's going to say no. But he has you going a different way because he has these other people that he wants you to touch. Because he... It, it doesn't come from us. It comes from the Spirit of God. It comes from the Holy Spirit. It's not Amen. by power nor by might, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. And that's when the drawing and stuff comes. 
We don't even have sense enough to know that we need Jesus Christ as a Savior. He has to soften our heart and tell us that we need him. And then he has to let us know and teach us how to accept him. Because we don't have Mm -hmm. sense enough on our own strength. That's true. You know, have you ever seen, have you ever seen churches? No offense, like you said, we're not knocking anybody. I don't, I can't afford to knock people with all the mistakes I've made. I, in fact, I ask for to forgive me. I, I'm going back on YouTube, take off a couple of my, uh, my, uh, uh, the videos I have on there because it, they're too harsh. You know, you can't approach people that way. But, um, God's been really working on my heart and I really appreciate it and I thank Him for that. But, um, have you ever noticed there are people that have ministers in their church that didn't even know Jesus' real name? They right. have no, yeah, they don't have background of the Bible. They didn't know his real Hebrew name is Yeshua. They don't know that they didn't have James back in the day. Jesus came through the Greek language. See, now, yeah, you have to know. I told somebody one day, you know, I brought this up before, but I told somebody one day, one day God has many names. I was praying. And I said, Jehovah Jireh, be their provider. And Jehovah Rapha, be their healer. Bring healing into their life. And when I got done, he was like, who, who, was, who was you praying to? Who? I said, you're God. <laughs> and I, I, I was bringing up El Shaddai. I was bringing them all up. I was bringing Je- Jehovah Sidkenu, Jehovah Nisi. I, I, was, I, was, I was bringing them up. And they did not know. Now, listen, this person is high up in the church and did not know no. that God had different names. Yeah, but see, but man raised him up. Everyone always think that when you get into a different position that it's God raising you. So many times it's man himself that is raising and putting in high positions, just like with mm-hmm. the Levites. And, That's good. And it's not necessarily God because we are impressed. Oh, he has a doctorate in theology. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, paper. And, 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 in, and in some cases... Uh, where I used, to, uh, Catherine would say, they went to the seminary. No, not, uh, no, she says they went cemetery. to the cemetery. Oh no, no, I mean, it's, I, I mean, it was the sem- they call it the seminary, okay? And she was referring to the, the that that that. So many times, when you're listening under man's precepts, you're getting the watered down word of God. Mm-hmm. So it tickles well, you know, the air. So it's something that they want to hear instead of exactly. that which is going to save you. Well, I know somebody that went to a sem- uh, mm, uh, mm, I'm not trying to say it on purpose now. Uh, somebody went to a seminary uh, just in the, in the western Pennsylvania area, and they were told they were studying the Bible, and they got to a certain chapter, and this man, this is a big story, everybody's heard it before, and it's a true story. The man told them, tear it out, you're not going to need that book. Uh, the teacher, uh, that's probably true, that's probably true, that was said. Mm-hmm. The teacher told them, tear it out, you're not going to need that book. Yeah. So, all right, what, what verse are we on now? We're on um, 25? Oh. Nineteen. Nineteen. Lay not up for your. Is it me? Yeah. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Uh, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. This is talking about greed. People that want to have accumulation now. While they're down here on earth, everything is for now, now, now. I want to enjoy it now. I want riches. I want fame. I want fortune. <laughs> I want it all. And Jesus is saying, this earth is going to burn up. It's not going to stay here. It's not going to be here forever. Everything that you have, you, whatever you were born with is what you're going to leave out of here with. That's and only he, temporary. He's tell, right, yes, it's only temporary. And you're right. And he's saying, don't, don't lay up treasures for on earth. They said, we're, have you ever seen somebody? I'll tell you, I'll give you a good example. Um, there's an older gentleman that I used to hang with years ago. A sweet guy, really nice guy. We were just really tight friends. We were really good friends. And I didn't have anybody to talk to. He didn't have anybody to talk to, so we became friends. And him and his wife, uh, well, it was his girlfriend at the time, they gave me a whole bunch of canned food, canned goods and boxed food. And 
and they were just sto- they were like hoarders. They were just storing up all this food. They had so much food, guys. They could have literally gave this food to a food bank. But they stored it up and they kept it so long. You know, yeah, you remember what happened to us? Yeah, and yeah. you know what happened? Do you remember what happened to our house down there in Tansburg? Yeah, moss. Our, we got moss. We opened up the bo- this is no lie. We opened up the boxes of food and there were moths inside the boxes and they flew all in the house, all in the kitchen and stuff from all that old food and we ended up getting moths in our house. Those moths ate up our, our clothes. And it's being so that's what hoarding does for you. And this is what this is what um your spiritual life will be like if you try to hoard things and not get you know, not pay it forward, not not get into giving people things and you know, that stuff should have been gone a long time ago. None of that food we couldn't eat it. None of the food was any good. Right. So, you know, that's we says where moth and rust does corrupt. The cans were rusty and the food was mothy. And it says where thieves will break through and steal. If you have a bunch of gold in your house, let's say you have a million dollars in in, in $50 bills underneath your mattress, how many times have we heard stories about thieves breaking into these old people's houses and stealing their money? And the people have been saving this money all their lives. They wanted to die with with like a million dollars under their mattress. (laughs) Does that make any sense? No. You see? The issue here is what what is temporary and what is eternal. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I can't remember, but All I know you probably are heard. Temporary. Everything All is. Are... Uh, did you did you hear the joke about the gold? I can't remember how it goes now, but there's a joke where this man was storing up gold or whatever. There was these two men, I think, standing by each other. I'm bad with telling jokes, but. They were standing by each other talking, and the one man said, I'm, I'm storing up all my gold. He said, what are, you, what are you doing? Why do you have all that gold? He goes, well, I'm storing up all my gold, so when I die, I want, to take, I want my gold to go to heaven with me. And the other man looked at him, and he said, uh, I'm not doing that. You don't, there's no need for that. And he said, yes, there is. Why? Why do you say that? He said, my God. He said, no, no. The, the second guy looked at him and said, why do you have that suitcase full of, uh, uh, full of paint? Uh, what is it, asphalt, let's see, or pavement? Yeah, he, he said, <laughs> And, and, and so that goes to show God walks on gold. Why are you trying to why are you trying to save it and he walks on gold? There's anything you want in heaven. Uh, yeah. yeah, you get it? He had he said, Why are you yeah. carrying around that, that suitcase full of asphalt? Yeah, that thing that's what it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so we gotta we gotta use our sense. You know, use common sense. It's, you know, it's nice to take care of the things and be a good steward over whatever God gave you, but don't be greedy. You know, give it away. It, it, and not only that, you know, I think, I honestly think that hoarding, uh, well, I know, hoarding is a sin. And the reason that I say hoarding is a sin is because you would rather moth and rust corrupt it than to give it to some hungry family or somebody that needs to have their rent paid or something. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. what you're doing is it's a sin because you're, you're letting people think that you don't believe that your God is big enough to give you more. Mm-hmm. Makes sense, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But think about it this way. If you hold your hand open and water is flowing through it, right? Mm -hmm. If you hold it closed, nothing can come in and nothing can go out. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Therefore, you don't drink and nobody else does either. Nobody does anything. Where they caught a thing that um, runs electric conductors, like a conductor. Mm Mm-hmm. I think That's we should good. be conducting, and too many people are trying to be, like, the actual clients. <laughs> <laughs> now, Debbie, I'll tell you a little story about my son. My son, Jared, about two or three years ago, we lived in our other house. And um, Jared got to the point where he had a lot of bikes. My son loves his bikes. He's good at them. I saw my, I saw my son tear down a bike and put it back up in about ten minutes. He's uh-huh. that good with bikes. In fact, he's one of the best riders in our area where we live at. The little kids all adore him. <laughs> hey, you're good, Jared's good, man. They really love him, you know. And um, it got to the point where Jared started giving away his bikes. And, but then he would get more. And I said, Jared, why what, are you run, you're not running a little bike thing here. I, you, know, you know, little kids always get into something. And I, I asked him, I said, you better not be running a little bike thing going on here. I said, because you get in trouble with that. He goes, no, nah, Ma, you know what happened. And I said, what? He said, what you preached on, he heard, he heard a sermon that I preached in church one day, and he said, Ma, I've been trying it, and it really, really works. And I said, mm-hmm. this is what? He said, I'm giving my bikes to little boys. I'm getting chills telling the story. He said, I'm giving my bikes to little boys who need bikes, 
He said, and every time I give one away, somebody else gives me another one. What? To give away. You remember that, Lex? You remember that, Lex? Yeah, he was getting nice, you? Lex. Yeah, he was getting, I mean, he was getting not mongooses. He was getting those kind that you order in the mail for like three or four hundred dollars. Uh -huh. Isn't that something? Now, how old was he? That's about twelve then? Yeah. Uh, but, but he was being obedient with it. He was giving them away. Isn't that something? Yeah, he gives everything away. Yeah, that's one thing I like. And that's why he never wants for anything, because my son gives everything away. He never mm -hmm. wants for nothing. Anyhow, that's what I wanted to say. Okay, who's, who's next? Amen. Okay, uh, Lex, you read. And that was it. We were going to 20, right? That was it. Yeah, right. yeah. we read them all. Yeah, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. <clears throat> so if your heart's into giving, you'll be a giver. If your heart's stingy and closed up, you won't give anything. People will people will be able to tell what type of person you are by your compassion. All right. Jesus was a man of compassion. When he died on that cross, he died on that cross out of compassion because out of love, he loved us. And you give out of love and trust that God will give it back. Amen. Is there anything anybody wants to add to the Bible study? I really enjoyed it tonight. Yeah. Anybody want to say anything? Okay. One thing about love, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. Mm, ooh. That's nice. Excellent. Amen. That's excellent. Amen. It's an action verb. So you can give without loving, but you cannot love with, <laughs> without giving. Amen. That's it. Mm. Mm, that's real good. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm going to make a poster as soon as we get off this phone <laughs> and hang it up. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else um, want to say anything? Lex, Pastor Rod. No. Nope. You all. You've all said enough. Yeah, all it was good, beautiful. All, all, good, all good words. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, may the, I, I'm going to pray pray out. Um, uh, Lex, would you want to pray out? Okay. Oh, good. Amen. Okay, Lexi's going to pray us out. <laughs> Father God, we just come to you right now, and we thank you for your presence and your glory. We thank you for the we thank you for the ability to bask in your love, Lord, and continue to strengthen us. Continue to open our hearts so that we can. Help expand your kingdom, Lord, and help save souls. And let us be good examples. And let people see us and want to be close to you because of us, Lord. Uh, we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. For the things. He has done. God bless you all. Thank you for coming. And I will see you hopefully, Lord willing, next week, next Wednesday at 8 o'clock. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Good night. Good night.